to kick it off at the Cheez It Citrus Bowl between Purdue and LSU here at Camping World Stadium. And before the game, we had Drew Brees wired for sound. Yeah. Great seeing you, man. Dude, great seeing you too, right. man. Hey, love you, brother. Yeah, you too. You too. Oh, Congrats yeah. on a great season too. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah. it. All right. In 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 four hours, I'm going to be focused on my son's spring seven on seven league. That's right. Uh, That's right. He's stealing some ball plays from you know LSU. Some I, I already got I got some Purdue playbook and just kind of melt mold my own little offense for the you know the eighth grade Santa Fe Christian uh, Eagles. Coach Kelly, how you doing? How are you, man? Good to see you. Would you think Drew Brees would have to steal <laughs> other offenses to get set for seven on seven? I think he's probably has enough in his own holster. Imitation is the flattest form. So if he wants to steal some stuff from other coaches, it's a it's a sign of respect. Well, Purdue won the toss and deferred their option to the second half. So they'll start the third quarter with the football, but that means Brian Kelly's Bayou Bengals. We'll have it first here at the Cheese at Citrus Bowl. Noah Kane, Gregory Clayton back deep to receive the opening kick, and it will be Kane from the four. Dives out across the 25 yard line. And Jaden Daniels. It was a bounce back season overall, Dan, for LSU as a program. But having said that, a quarterback's going to go through his ups and downs during the year, and Jaden Daniels certainly did. Yeah, mentioning in the opening that one of two FBS quarterbacks, 800 yards on the ground, 2,000 yards to the air. So a lot of good, definitely some valleys in there. The big word throughout this whole season, you'll hear it today from us a ton trust from both the quarterback to those perimeter players. Well, Austin Burton is making only his. Fourth career start, Jaden Daniels making his 44th career start. And they get things started with a gain of three, and we already have a player losing his helmet, a little slow to get up as Reese Taylor has to come to the sideline for Purdue. Let's take a look at today's impact players. LSU offensively, Malik Neighbors, probably their best wide receiver this year, 63 catches, 854 yards. They're going to move him around a lot today for this offense. Purdue defensive end Jack Sullivan, a phenomenal leader, consistent energy throughout this bowl preparation for the Boilermakers. Daniels, quarterback run. And it looks as if his forward progress was stopped past the line to gain, driven back by Bryce Hampton. But that should be good for an LSU first down. Yeah, really good reaction. This is an RPO. He pulls it to throw, and there's that linebacker in that second window here in Douglas, and he does a good job of tucking it. Don't make a bad play worse. Follow, essentially, that run game. First down for LSU. No Kayshawn Booty. No Jare Jenkins. No Jack Besh. No Josh Williams today for LSU offensively. And Williams, of course, the number one tailback during the season as he is done with knee surgery as Brian Thomas couldn't hold on to that low throw so we expect to see not only Noah Kane but also John Emery it'll be backfield by committee for LSU I still think there's plenty of talent we talked about neighbors is an impact player and that throw right there to Brian Thomas big play receiver for this offense six four he's got a lot of skill he is going to be a big part of their pass game in the future and now Emery out there to the right of Daniels in the shotgun Blitz coming. Long throw outside right through the hands of Kyron Lacey. So it will be third down and 10 for LSU. Yeah, good timing on the stop route to Lacey. Just got to find it in. That's something that development that has happened for Jaden Daniels is the timing and rhythm of this offense. And Brian Kelly knows offensively all the little details coming off of a long stretch of not playing have to be a big part this afternoon for the Tigers. Well, the first ever meeting between these two programs, but Brian Kelly is 6-0 all time against Purdue from when he was at Notre Dame. Third down and 10. Two receivers stacked to either side. Out of the pocket, trying to run for it, and he is not going to get there as Jaden Daniels. Gang tackled at the 41-yard line. So it will be fourth down and at least four. Prince James Boyd 
the first there for Purdue. Yeah, there's a two-man stunt on that right side. It's called a TE tackle. Go inside. Excuse me, outside defensive end comes inside. And the pressure by Sindor gets this Purdue defense off the field. So Jay Bramblett, the Notre Dame transfer, will come on and kick it deep to Sawinski. Charlie Jones, the normal punt returner for Purdue, but he has opted out of today's game. So Andrew Sawinski, all the way back to his own 10-yard line, makes the first man miss. That's a pretty good return. Out across the 20-yard line. And now Austin Burton gets an opportunity. A sixth-year senior from Newton, Massachusetts. The athletic lineage via Northwestern, but he did go to LSU, where, or rather UCLA, where he began his career. Transferred to Purdue, started against FAU earlier this season, and threw three touchdowns, had 166 yards in that game, and now gets an opportunity for his third career start, one in 2019 at UCLA. And an opportunity not only against FAU, but now against LSU in the bowl game. And he'll throw one to the sideline on first down and miss Sawinski. It'll be second down and ten. You know, for Austin Burton, no, he is not Aiden O'Connell, who to Chris's report before getting ready for the NFL draft, but a little bit more of a dual threat athlete than Aiden O'Connell was for this offense. The challenge for him today is can he get it out as quickly as Aiden did for this offense that led the Big Ten in passing yards to 275 a game. A rollout for Burton. And he'll tuck it under. Nowhere to go with the football, so dives out to the 27-yard line. As Greg Brooks made the stop, it's a gain of five. It'll be third down and five. Yeah, good decision by the quarterback. Get him outside of the pocket, settle him down early on in this football game. Very simple read. He trusts his legs. Low snap. Burton. Quarterback run. Tried to stay behind the line of scrimmage and still throw the football, and now just throws it away. Harold Perkins, the freshman from New Orleans, put the pressure on. Now you talked about Perkins. This is him right in the middle right here. Watch as Austin Burton drops back to pass. Great vision. Now he's going to see this scene to take off and see the closing speed by Perkins. Hesitates, waits for Burton to fully commit, and then Perkins probably doesn't want to get a flag right there, so he essentially shoves him, but really good job. Just awareness and then the athleticism to go chase down the quarterback. Gregory Clayton is back deep to receive the punt for LSU. And that's a line drive kick. That'll be returnable. Clayton from the 27. Flag thrown behind the play. That's pretty good coverage for Purdue on a very low kick of 46 yards. We'll have to check the marker. There is no foul on the play for any legal block in the back. Timeout. So it will be the 37-yard line to begin for LSU. Well, it wouldn't be Orlando if someone wasn't taking a ride somewhere. Nice day for it. What's in your wallet? Part of bowl week for both teams. Trip to Top Golf. Oh, that was a shank. There was a couple of good moves at it in there, but that last one, that was long and wrong. Just turn back, turn through. Come on. <laughs> back to the offense. LSU. Here's a seam shot on time. Jaden Daniels to the freshman tight end, Mason Taylor. Great seam shot. Really good job. Vision here by Jaden Daniels. Peak. See the linebackers not getting enough. Devin Drift. Or drill that ball to Mason Taylor. I love the bend by the young tight end, the true freshman, and then the throw to somewhat protect him by Daniels. And we have another injury to this Purdue defense. Branson Dean being walked mm. off as it looks like he's holding his left hand. 
And Chris Budden, that's not the only injury this Purdue defense has already had to absorb. Yeah, we already saw Reese Taylor, cornerback, come off the field after his helmet popped off. He is still in the injury tent. They have taken away his helmet, but a position that's already thin for Purdue with Corey Trice opting out of this game. Yeah, their top corner opts out. Now their other starting corner in the injury tent, Noah Kane. A yard and a half on first down. Jalen Graham, an academic suspension, a starting middle linebacker. So there are important players, Dan, for both teams missing today. No doubt. You talk about Jalen Graham, so then Bryce Hampton is going to step in as that nickel back on that tackle there for the Purdue defense. Comes that pressure off the edge. Kane tried to run in behind it and didn't get much, a yard. So after giving up a chunk play to Mason Taylor into plus territory, back-to-back -back tackles near the line of scrimmage for Purdue, forces third down and seven. Lawrence Johnson with that last stop. Yeah, if you're LSU, you're thinking these safeties are going to go play back and play a two-high shell. The big thing is communicating that stunt by the defensive line. Work the middle of the field if you're Jaden Daniels. Only a three-man rush. Daniels out of the pocket. Being chased. Gets to the sideline. Comes up short. Looked like Kydron Jenkins was acting as a spy and was ready to track Daniels to the sideline. Brought him down two yards shy, but on fourth down, yeah. LSU will go for it. Absolutely, as they should. This is an offensive line that has the potential to bring all five guys back. Interior with Turner, Frazier, and Bradford feel good, especially Branson Dean not in the game to be able to run the football. Middle of the pack this year on fourth down for LSU. Daniels to try and throw for it on the slant. It's good for the first down. Malik Neighbors broke a tackle and got inside the 25 before he was brought down. Picks up 12. Watch Neighbors, a little short post, get inside. I love the ball placement again by Daniels that he can use his belly to make that catch. A keeper for Daniels. Flag down on the far side of the field. I don't know if LSU had enough people on the line of scrimmage playing with that tempo after that fourth down conversion. Illegal formation, offense, more than four in the backfield. Five yard penalty, first down. So that'll make it first and 15. TCU matched the physicality yeah. of Michigan in a way I don't think anyone expected. Can they match the physicality of Georgia? <laughs> Twice in one week. Oh boy, how interesting a matchup is that for the national championship. Four-man rush. Seam round. Neighbors makes the catch. Boy, he has been red hot into the red zone. The last three games coming into this bowl game, Neighbors ended the season with 19 catches, 326 yards. Yeah, great job by Jaden Daniels, though. Sees the linebacker trigger. Neighbors has a great job or great feel. Linebacker leaves. Let me give my eyes back to the quarterback and replace it with a skinny slant. He had a huge SEC championship game and a touchdown against Georgia as well. John Emery up the middle, first down to the 10-yard line. Flag on the far side of the field again, thrown at the line of scrimmage. Offside, defense number 96 lined up in the neutral zone. That five-yard penalty results in a first down. So it should be first and goal as the nose of the football is at the 10 yard line. Goal to go for LSU as we approach the midway point of the first quarter. Daniels pulls it back. Searching for that front left pylon. Knocked out of bounds at the four. It'll be second down and goal. A really nice job by Purdue defensively, just really forcing Daniels to continue to run to that sideline. Watch how everybody almost strings this out. 
you know, push the, force the quarterback sideline to sideline. You got friends coming, and then really nice job by Grigsby on the perimeter, who's filling in for Reese Taylor, making that tackle, shoving him out of bounds. Emery down to the one yard line, reached the ball out, but came up short. It'll be third down and goal. Traditional zone read. The left side does a very good job push. Yeah, he's about a half of football short. They line up to go quick. Emery stood up. Second effort into the end zone. That is an LSU touchdown. Sixth rushing touchdown of the season for John Emery. And his eighth and all. And LSU strikes first. of play calling Dan on that 10 play touchdown. Well done by the LSU offense. They got neighbors going with a couple conversions. Emery finishes it with a touchdown run and the Tigers are up seven early on. Mississippi State, you know, the, the tragic passing of Coach Leach is everybody has such great things to say about him as a person and the memories that he helped create. And it's kind of one of the very unique things that football brings is um, certain personalities in, in that vehicle of football have tremendous impact on so many people. It'll be a touchback for the kick. We all have our favorite memories of Coach Leach. This was mine from a broadcast I was a part of a few years ago. Oh, yeah. It's a little mustache. Oh, yeah. Allison Williams interviewing Mike Leach after that game when Gardner Minshew was rocking the mustache back at Wazoo and that became something that was all over all the kids in the student section. We got one from Mike Leach and Gardner Minshew very happy to put it on the head coach afterwards as Devin Mockaby picks up about seven on first down. And the Pirate at Texas Tech, Washington State and Mississippi State 158 and 107 in 21 seasons as an FBS head coach and part of the creation of the air raid as flags fly for an illegal shift on this play. False start, offense number 74, five yard penalty, second down. And Dan, all of football used to kind of look down their nose a bit at Mike Leach and that offense and now watch the NFL. Oh, His DNA over. is everywhere in the NFL. Yeah, you could make the case that the SEC did as well. I mean, wasn't his first SEC win or certainly one of them when they went and hung like 50 on LSU. So it was in the it was in Death Valley I believe in his first season where it was that shocking experience of wow this this system has the chance under Mike Leach in the SEC. Marshawn Rice about a yard shy of the first down. Yeah but the pass game impact that coach Leach had was for a long time relegated to college football and it is absolutely weaved its way into the NFL third down and one Maccabee finds a crease and easily picks up the first down five yards on the ground for the former walk-on one of the great stories in college football Runs hard, man. Slippery runner. You can make the case that's the the best freshman season for a tailback at Purdue in a very long time. Ran for 17 touchdowns this year as a program. They had 11 in 2000, 2020, and 21 combined. Burton avoids the rush. He's going to take a shot down the seam, and it's incomplete. 
Deion Burks was behind the coverage, and Burton just didn't put it out in front of him, underthrown a bit, and that allowed Major Burns to recover. Yeah, he's got an inside poster, trying to take advantage of all the space really left to the left sideline, and it's a touchdown if Burton doesn't slip. You can see Burton as he goes to make that throw as Burks is coming back to try to make a play on the ball. When Burton went to make that throw, there's just a little bit of a slip, and it really hindered how much he can get the ball downfield. Huckabee. For a yard. Kai Wingo made the stop. Watch this slip here, Bob. Is he, you're trying to get a little bit of a half roll and put your back foot in the ground and drive it. See as he's climbing the pocket there, that right foot slips and he's got to try to gather and he just doesn't have a good enough foundation to really drive the ball downfield. Missed shot for Purdue offensively. Another walk on a tailback. Dylan Downing in the game now to the right of Burton in the shotgun third down and not. Yeah, be ready. You think you're going to get pressure to the right. So you've got to really handle communication, handle what the pressure might be from LSU, and then find your matchup off of it. Perkins now goes from the right to the left. Another deep shot. And this one well overthrown. That had too much on it. For Drew Bibber. And so Purdue will have to punt. Yeah, Bobby, good job by Purdue offensively. Both pre-snap understanding the pressure was going to come. LSU changes it. They pick it up, but really the secondary, the back end for LSU, not allowing anybody to create separation. Nowhere really fit that ball in for Burton. So Clayton drops back again. And this one will result in a fair catch, and he's run into, and that will draw an automatic 15-yard foul. Deion Burks plowed into Gregory Clayton after the fair catch was called for, so this will give LSU pretty good field position. Picking team number four, 15-yard penalty, first down, timeout. sure you're going to get a more clear-cut example of kick-catch kick, catch interference than that. Another Garrett Nussmeyer is out to begin this possession for LSU, and he came on in relief of Jaden Daniels when the ankle injury that Daniels suffered against Texas A&M was re-aggravated against Georgia in the SEC championship game. A handoff here to Noah Kane, and he's got a first down, and Nussmeyer had a big second half against Georgia. Watch that backside card pull, power play. Great job by Kane, hugging that block, and then the ex-Penn State, Nittany line physical on the finish of that run. Aspire to throw for the first time. He's gonna take a shot down the sideline for neighbors. Incomplete. That looked like a good throw from Garrett Nussmeyer, and Neighbors couldn't haul it in. He was behind Jamari Brown. A little bit of a double move. I love the eyes from Nussmeyer to hold that free safety. You know, watch Neighbors stop, stop your feet. You get the corner to hesitate, and then the ball downfield. A little bit drifted inside, but Neighbors a good enough player to go make that catch. That's just a drop. Really want to see his eyes follow that football. Could have been a big player for this LSU offense. Follow that ball with your eyes, and that's a big catch. Swing pass to Kane. And he's bottled up. Dropped after a gain of two. So third down and eight at midfield for LSU. Now where's Malik Neighbors? That's really been the conversation on third down so far for this LSU offense. He's trying to find ways to get him in those matchups to work inside that slot. He's to the left of Nussmeyer. Four-man rush. Nussmeyer, rifle shot to the sideline. Neighbors, did he get a foot down? He did. And control for the first down. Yeah, switch release. You're going to get the outside receiver to come in, and then Neighbors is going to be the guy that follows it. See, now you're going to get that defender stuck inside. Nussmeyer with a little shuffle, and then throw it over the top. Really good job taking the slot receiver and making him that outside receiver on the switch release.
Screen pass. Brian Thomas to the 31 yard line. Gain of six. Bryce Hampton tripped him up. Well, Malik Neighbors was a part of this LSU offense through the first 10 games, certainly, but the last three, he became mm, the primary go to weapon, and that touchdown against Georgia in the SEC title game. Here comes that pressure off that edge. Again, a four-man rush. Again, up the seam. Reaching up was Mason Taylor, but that one sailed a bit too high. Well, Nussmeyer can throw it. There's no doubt about that. He can spin it. it might be sometimes he needs to take a little bit off of it. Yeah, sometimes you just want a little bit of love. I call it love or touch on that ball. Where that safety's hanging back in the middle of the field, Bob, sometimes it's okay to just stop a guy. You know, if you want to firm that ball, just put it on his shoulder, stop him, and he's sitting to that boring, zo that boring zone void. Third down and four. I mean, you're getting all-out pressure from Purdue right now. You create your matchup. Got to get the ball out of your hands. One guy's going to be unblocked. No deep safeties. They show a zero blitz, and here it comes. Nussmeyer on the run to the sideline. Did Mason Taylor get a foot down with control? Yes, he did. Another third down conversion. This one good for 17. Yeah, you're going to go sprint to the left, and here's Taylor on the corner route. Great job of realizing I've got that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Now throw it to space away from the extra pressure. You run away with your quarterback from the unblocked defender, and then you get the corner route with inside leverage versus man coverage. Adrian Jenkins had Nussmeyer on the run, but a strong throw to the sideline and a first down in the red zone. Another screen. This one, Kyron Lacey to the 10-yard line. He picked up four. Antonio Stevens made the stop. I like the way Nussmark throws the ball. Really compact release. It's tight. It's a little bit more of a, a, a violent flick rather than an elongated release. And I think you're starting to see a little bit of the perimeter throws that happen real quickly for this offense. Inside of the final 90 seconds of the opening quarter, and LSU looking to add to the 7-0 lead. Their last drive, engineered by Jaden Daniels, a 10-play touchdown drive, and now Garrett Nussmeyer has them inside the 10-yard line. Noah Kane finds a cutback lane and a freeway to the end zone for another LSU touchdown. Great double team off the left side. Campbell and Frazier are just going to co completely collapse this side of the offensive line. And what you're going to do is put this defensive end in the bind. He hesitates. Kane, again, the great hug on those blocks. And LSU for a touchdown. What a great job drive-wise by Garrett Nussmeyer. Some completions, a big conversion on third down, and then the offensive line, and Noah Kane finished the job. 10-play touchdown drive the first time. This one an 8-play touchdown drive for LSU. They've got a 14-0 lead. Well, Week 17, tonight's Monday Night Football matchup. A huge AFC clash between Josh Allen and the 12-3 and Bills taking on Joe Burrow and the 11-4 and Bengals. The jungle will be rocking at Cincinnati tonight, 8-15 Eastern, 5-15 Pacific on ESPN, ABC, ESPN2, ESPN Deportes, ESPN Plus. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 7 on ESPN2. Dan, that one seat's up for grabs right it's now. huge. And... and, and I think it's huge for both conferences and stylistically with what each team or each of those teams wants to play. Kansas City obviously wants to be at home, and I think if you're Buffalo, you want it without Vaughn Miller. So Cincinnati's got a huge game tonight against Buffalo to see if they can kind of get back in that mix. Kansas City's got a chance to finish the job Saturday against the Raiders. Nathan Diver, another touchback through the back of the end zone. Our first chance to check in with Kevin Nagandi.
Bob, happy new year to you. Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Caleb Williams, first game since winning the Heisman here, finding Michael Jackson Dan. Yeah, it's great that he's playing in this game. There are questions whether he might play coming back from the injury. It's love seeing the Heisman Trophy winner out there. SC driving again up by 7-0 over Tulane. Tommy DeVito with a touchdown here. Illinois up 7-3 against Mississippi State in the Relia Quest Bowl on ESPN2. Bob, how many rounds has Dan played so far this week of golf? Over, under, we're going with the over at two and a half rounds. <laughs> I might be safe. Uh, yeah, I haven't played two and a half <laughs> rounds of golf since July, but <laughs> that will change here soon. And we all question your work ethic. You're not on the air enough. <laughs> Downing dragged down behind the line and lost the football. Was he down? The officials say no. Major Burns with a fumble recovery. Greg Brooks was all over Downing, and Downing is still on the turf. I think that knee might be down. Kind of lands a little bit on Brooks's body. Right there. That, that right knee, right? Yeah, he's down. Yeah. And it looked like, hopefully, he just had the wind knocked out of him, mm. as it looked like his midsection landed right on the knees of Greg Brooks, as they will roll over Dylan Downing. And hopefully it's nothing more serious than that. But... You'd have to think that replay is going to keep the ball with Purdue. Still a terrific tackle by the Arkansas transfer, Greg Brooks. And now a lot of concern from the Purdue sideline. All the players are coming off the sideline to check on Dylan Downing. And Downing, a guy that had such a good start to this season for Purdue and then dealt with some injury. He was the main running back with Austin Burton getting the start against right. FAU earlier this season. Had a 113-yard game against FAU. And now he has been helped up. And hopefully he can shake that off. But that was a violent tackle. And it's a thin offensive backfield as well for Purdue. As Downing and Devin Maccabee were going to share the ball carrying duties today. And we'll see. Maybe Tyrone Tracy will loop in there and support Maccabee mm -hmm. as they are now going to take a look in the replay booth at what was ruled a fumble on the field in a recovery by LSU, but it looked like Downing knee on the ground with control. Watch this right knee, right as Brooks is right about there. In that moment, that knee's about to hit the ground. Yep. So now it's really just figuring out what that second down is going to be, right? How, how much of a loss of yardage it was when that right knee went down. So this will be Purdue football, and you're right. They just have to figure out exactly where to spot it to make sure they've got the clock right and also the down and distance right. Here's the call. After further review, the ball carrier was down with the ball in possession at the 24-yard line. It'll be second down. So it's a loss of one. It'll be second and 11. Really good communication, though, by LSU defense. Watch the corner here and Brooks, okay? What's going to happen is, is that motion comes down. They're going to essentially switch roles. Brooks is going to be the pressure guy. The corner is going to fall back. Then he becomes that unblocked defender, and that equals that loss of yards. Really good job of changing responsibilities defensively off the motion. Sheffield in motion. He takes the screen pass, and he's got nowhere to go. He lost yardage back to the 21 as Bakai Wingo, the only starter on the defensive line for LSU, playing today with the opt-outs of Ojolari, Roy, and Gay. 
And he's there to make the tackle, and now it's third and long. Third-team All-American, Wingo. Second-team All-SEC, and you talked about some of those opt-outs. They've gone from a four-man front with those guys, and with Ojolari, Gay, and Roy out. They're playing a little bit of a three-man front today defensively, LSU. They rush four here. And that one squeezed into a tight window. Maccabee, the intended receiver, and Joe Fouché had leverage inside, almost came up with an interception, so it will be a Purdue punt. Yeah, you'd love, this is an option route by Maccabee. You'd love to see him break away. Instead, he breaks inside. Fouché playing with phenomenal leverage, and there's just nowhere to throw the football. Yeah, you see how he breaks inside. You'd love with Fouché sitting with inside leverage. He's got the choice to break away. That's actually a Drew Brees special from his New Orleans Saints days. Better punt from Ansel this time. And the fair catch made at the 38-yard line by Clayton. Well, coming up Sunday at 2 Eastern, 1 Central on ABC and the ESPN app. It is the FCS championship game between defending champion North Dakota State and South Dakota State at Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas. These schools just a little more than two and a half hours apart, and they will play for the title. The Bison, the defending FCS champs, won four of the last five titles and nine of the last 11. The definition of a dynasty. So now it's Jaden Daniels back to run the offense. We'll see if we see Garrett Nussmeyer again. Imagine we will. Mason Taylor in motion. Play action. Daniels has all day, finds a check down in Emory. He picks up three. OC Brothers made the stop. Man, that should take us to the end of the first. And it does. LSU with a two touchdown lead. Dominant performance so far through the first 15 minutes for LSU. And the Chiefs of you with touchdown drives. Their last two possessions, they set up the screen to neighbors here. He looks for the tunnel, and it closes after a gain of four, so it will be third down and three. And a good retrace by that Purdue defensive line. You know, Dean and Sindor trying to get that tunnel screen that you're talking about. Third down, we've seen a little bit of everything from this LSU offense. They've moved the quarterback, they've found neighbors. I love how spread out their formation is really declaring information for the quarterback. Here comes all out pressure again. Where's your one-on-one -on -one matchup? You get all that pressure. Daniels on a rollout. He's got to hook up with neighbors for a first down. Another third down conversion. Let's go down to Chris. Bob, a new center in for the Tigers, Marlon Martinez, as Charles Turner has gone into the locker room dealing with an injury. A guy that this coaching staff raves about, saying Turner is the model of consistency on that O-line. Well, they've used six different starting combinations during the regular season on the offensive line. And Miles Frazier is the only player that started every game this year, and he had to start at three different positions. So there's been plenty of shuffling on the O-line for LSU this year. A toss to John Emery. Speed to the edge, and he gets to the 32-yard line. And Dan, a story I'm not sure around the country got a lot of play, but certainly did in the SEC. You've got two true freshman tackles in Emory Jones and Will Campbell that they settled on, and that seems to be their best. It's the it's the first time that LSU's ever done that. A couple of true freshman offensive tackles. And both are super talented, Will Campbell and Emory Jones. Also, throughout the year, they became kind of the standard setters in that room of the intensity and work, work ethic on a day-to-day -day basis. Daniels extends the play and eventually finds Mason Taylor. Wide open on the sideline. Taylor breaking tackles, and he hits pay dirt. 32-yard touchdown. Speaking of true freshmen, Mason Taylor, his third score of the year. How about that offensive line that we were just talking about for LSU, giving Jaden Daniels absolutely all day to throw. And he finds the true freshman, Mason Taylor. I remember calling the Tennessee game that we had for LSU, Bob, and I was like, man, this kid is a young and talented player. 33 catches for almost 350 yards, and they asked a lot out of that young player. Well, as the Jets broadcaster, is dad Jason? A cup of coffee with the Jets, but mostly I have bad memories of his days with the Dolphins. Great. <laughs> Absolutely terrorizing quarterbacks. 
the son of a Hall of Famer, and Mason Taylor finds the end zone. And you're just going to get a little bit of a mismatch route on the left. Everybody carries, and Taylor just sits there. Daniels waits, 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 kicks it out, and then watch the athleticism after the catch. Some poor tackling part Purdue on the back end. Tigers up big in Orlando. Ball back. And Deion Burks at about the seven. Now to the 26-yard line as we take a look at our defensive spotlight brought to you by ReliaQuest. We talked about the true freshman talent on the offensive side of the ball for LSU. How about their best defensive player, arguably? Harold Perkins led them in tackles for loss and sacks this season. The number four overall recruit in our ESPN 300. Chris Button, he's been through, and his family has been through some trying times. Yeah, this was a big pickup in terms of recruiting for Brian Kelly and his staff because Perkins was originally committed to A&M, but his heart was in New Orleans. Grew up there until Hurricane Katrina forced his family to move to Houston, but always knew he wanted to get back to Louisiana. And for Matt House, it was hard to recruit him. Couldn't even go to his see him in person because he was still coaching with the Chiefs. Just had to rely on phone calls in order to get him to commit. Greg Penn, that tackle on T.J. Sheffield. Well, Harold Perkins, when he was a senior in high school, Dan, prepping for his LSU arrival. It's an interesting article I read. They wanted some agility drills to be done by the incoming freshman. Oh, so the 20-yard shuttle run, which is a staple of the NFL combine. Right. What was your 20-yard shuttle run time, by the way? Uh, Just curious. I mean, it had to be somewhere in the <laughs> mid-fives. Nice. <laughs> he broke four seconds. Yeah, there you go. Maccabee with a stiff arm. And a first down. By the way, breaking four seconds Doesn't happen in the 20-yard shuttle. He's a true freshman in college. Okay. That would have been the second fastest time this year at the NFL Combine of guys going to the NFL now. And he did it as a true freshman. As a high school senior, yeah. basically. <laughs> I mean, that's next level. He and, and you can make the case that the sky is the limit. Just in this first, what, 20 minutes of this game, he's been all over the field as far as places that they move him. You see him as an edge rusher right now. He's been off the ball, dropping in coverage. Blitz up the middle and got home, but a good job by Austin Burton to sidestep the rush and just get back to the line of scrimmage. You know, and if you talk to Matt House, the defensive coordinator, he actually thinks that he is going to be an inside linebacker in the long run. And I know Micah Parsons plays for the Dallas Cowboys, but Marcus Spears, an ex-LSU guy, and Ryan Clark, both ex-Tigers, say that Perkins reminds them a lot of the athleticism and then the versatility that Micah Parsons has for the Cowboys defense. DJ Sheffield. He lost a couple of yards. Jacoby and Guillory made the stop. This white hat, Matt House. That's Coach Denbrock, their offensive coordinator on the right, House on the left. This LSU defense started the year really strong, tailed off a little bit on the back end, and just talking to him consistently, they want to dominate the run. In the future, they got to get better in the red zone, and that's why really defensively was such a focus for the recruiting period, because in many ways, DBU, or certainly one of the DBUs, is going to have to rebuild the great majority of their secondary for next season. Sheffield lost his helmet off the field on third down, and now it is about to be third down and 19. False start. Offense number 54. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Well, Purdue without a couple of starters on the offensive line, so Josh Kaltenberger, the backup center, commits the false start, and now it's third down and long. Screen to Maccabi. Got some blockers out in front, but a long way to go to try and pick up the first down. And barely gets back across the original line of scrimmage. Sage Ryan made the stop, so down by three scores. Purdue will kick it away again. Yeah, Bobby, I'd like to see Purdue do a little bit of that type of play call on first down. They've been in so many third and longs this afternoon with some backup offensive linemen versus a very athletic LSU defense. For Brian Brahma, I'd like to see a little bit more screen early on to try to get take advantage of an aggressive defense and get yourself into better third downs. Ansel with an end-over-end kick. Clayton with a fair catch. 
And pretty good field position again for LSU just across their own 30-yard line. No way you can make it up that. My money's on the girls. The only way I'm making it up that is if that bungee cord pulled me up. <laughs> Possibly make up. See RG3 find Get out his call. wife was in labor yeah. on the mega cast. Could you imagine <laughs> having to make that flight? <laughs> All of a sudden, he's doing the 100-yard dash off the sideline. Listen, Stephen A makes fun of me for not ever paying for first class of my own. RG3, you've made enough American dollars where you can go get yourself a private plane to get home to your in-labor wife. He's a man of the people. Yeah. You could be both, man of the people and... Get on a PJ. <laughs> First and ten. Daniels again well protected. Finds Mason Taylor right in the soft spot of that Purdue zone for 15. Just watch Daniels' eyes hang, hang. He sees the linebacker take the shallow. Listen to your feet. See that last second eye? Tilts the eyes from the left to the middle of the field and finds Mason Taylor. The offensive line right now for LSU doing a great job of protecting their quarterback, and he's doing a very nice job of seeing the defense react. And we've got an injury timeout with LSU on top by three scores. You can eat. And another corner goes down, Dan, for Purdue. That's Brandon Callaway that was injured before we went away. Yeah, not great for Purdue defense that started the game without opt-out Corey Trice lost Reese Taylor within the first couple minutes and then Callaway takes a shot on the shoulder there so you're down to really you're talking fourth fifth and sixth corners against an offensive passing game that is very diverse on the outside young man's in pain it took him a long time to even get off the field so after the injury timeout first down handoff to Noah Kane and he drags tacklers close to midfield, picks up four and a half. Cam Allen made the Purdue tackle. Tempo for LSU. Three-man rush. Daniels, well protected. And an accurate throw to Neighbors. He thought he may have... Not gone down, but the officials say down about a yard shy of the first down. Really good completion there, strong hands. And then does he come down? Yeah, clearly down. So third down and one. On a keeper, it's Daniels. Terrific fake the secondary down inside the 10-yard line finally brought down by Sanusi Kane first and goal for LSU well, it's a really an overload front and that's the tight end they're gonna down block and then Jaden Daniels is just gonna read again that unblocked defender last time he gave it to Kane on the goal line this time he keeps it and then the athleticism to break some tackles and make some people miss that overload front. You took the backside tackle, brought him to the right of the formation. You take your tight end, Mashburn, put him at an offensive tackle spot, and then true that traditional zone read for Jaden Daniels. One time give, one time keep. And another Purdue injury, backup linebacker Samisi Bakasieki is being walked off the field. So it's been a war of attrition here in the first half for this Purdue defense. And it's first and goal. Kane. Into the end zone again. His second rushing touchdown. Yeah, a couple things are great. You're going to pull these backside right guard and right tackle, the motion. But this is a fantastic job by the tight end. Arc releasing to go get the safety. And there's that seam right there. Again, the vision, the hugging of the blocks by Noah Kane. You pull the backside guard and tackle. They're really those kickout guys. And then Mashburn, that tight end, leads up on the safety. And there's that great tunnel, that great funnel for Noah Kane to follow. Touchdowns on four straight possessions for LSU to open up the 28 to nothing lead. John Emery had a touchdown run earlier. Noah Kane now has a pair as he caps a five-play scoring drive.
So right now, really good one between USC and Tulane. Back to you guys. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. A dominant performance by LSU so far here in the first half as they have scored touchdowns on their last four possessions. And Tyler Tracy stood up just shy of the 20-yard line on the kickoff return. Well, first season with Brian Kelly at the helm, they checked some boxes. Always loved to beat Alabama. They won their division. They got to the doorstep of the college football playoff. And a win today would give them a 10-win season, and they are well on their way towards that. So when you go from worst to first, you're making some history. And Arkansas, Auburn, and now LSU, SEC teams that finished last in their division one season, the following season, to get to the SEC title game. Maccabee looking for some space and not finding any. No gain on first down. And, and that really, this season for LSU started off week one, losing to Florida State off essentially what was a missed extra point. We called the Cheez-It Bowl game the other night when Florida State beat Oklahoma, and they look like, with Jordan Travis, a top-10 team. So that loss, given the extra point under Brian Kelly, shows even the... the, the greater sign of how good this football team was this season. A crosser. And a yard or two at best for Mershon Rice as we go down to Chris. Bob, Ryan Kelly has had immediate success at almost every stop that he's been at. I asked him, if you write a book, what, what is it that allows everyone to buy in? He said, you have to build trust. I can't say one thing and do the other. I have to be consistent. They have to see me every day doing the same thing, preaching what I'm doing. That builds trust and allows for immediate buy-in. <laughs> He also said he would be a great target for an assassin because he does the same thing every single day. So I was hoping that wasn't a literal thing, but uh, to his point, he's, he's a very consistent leader. And I think, you know, when we had their game, again, against Tennessee, talking with Coach on the sideline, he looked at me, he said, the greatest thing that I can be for this program is just an adult. And I think that personality has really had an impact on them. Looks like a timeout will be called by LSU on defense, not expecting Purdue this deep in their own end to go for it. But Purdue lined up on fourth and one and a half. Did line up to go for it. Coming up later on this afternoon, the granddaddy of, of them all. It is the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential. Penn State and Utah square off at five Eastern to Pacific on ESPN. Wow. 30 years almost since Penn State's won that Rose Bowl game. And the second consecutive year that Utah has made the game. You candidly, you'd like to see Penn State try to find a way to win that game for Sean Clifford, who's had a really solid career for them, and to send him out with a way to win in Pasadena would be good for, for him and, and kind of the story that he wrote there. And we documented this when we had Penn State earlier this season. There's probably no program in college football where you would have more of a favorable perception of them than Penn State mm -hmm. when the playoff goes from 4 to 12 as Pitt Purdue will fake the punt. And they lined up to go for it, brought the punt group out after the timeout, went for it anyway. They've got a first down. Why not? Down 28 nothing. I think they snapped this to Jack Sullivan. Is that 99 Jack Sullivan there? Just kind of a middle wedge. Sullivan moves the pile out to the 34-yard line. And the offense back on the field now for the Boilermakers. Yeah, snap it to the guy who wants to be a pilot. You can see Brian Brown wanting to play with some tempo now. Just urgency as an offense play action Burton to the sideline incomplete over the head of Sheffield and Burton paid the price as he was hit hard by Guillory as he released it yeah seen this a couple times today so you're gonna get a deep cross coming this way okay and as that deep cross comes and he goes this way and that safety drives that's when you want to launch that big post Burton put that ball down the field 40 to 50 yards in between those hashes and you got a chance to make a big play relatively simple read I think Brian Brown wants some aggression out of his quarterback long throw that one on target to TJ Sheffield 
And it'll be third down and two as Major Burns wrote him out. Let's check in with Chris. Well, Bob, if Purdue's going to make a comeback, they're going to do it without Dylan Downing, who just came out of the locker room, had his pads undone, his gloves off, no helmet, uh, clearly done for the day. So it's Devin Mockaby as the primary tailback. And they did say they might bring Tyrone Tracy in if necessary as kind of that Swiss Army knife, a wide receiver, but can line up in the backfield. Here comes a blitz. Burton out of the pocket. Spins forward. His helmet pops off, and a flag is thrown as well. Another flag is thrown late. And it looked like the first flag may have been for the hit on Burton. The second flag may have been for the reaction by Purdue to that hit. Let's see. Boucher and Baskerville combined to bring down Austin Burton. Good tough run by Burton. Personal foul targeting defense number 13. The previous play is under further review. So both flags were thrown apparently for Boucher as they will review whether or not this is indeed targeting. I mean, to me, Austin Burton is not giving himself up as a quarterback there. He's still a runner, and he's going down. And it's unfortunate that Fouché got him in the head, but he hit him with his arms, and the helmet popped off. Dan, to me, that's not targeting. I completely agree. And this is different, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Bobby, but with a shot to the head or neck area, since it is with the arm and he's going down, well, it's forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. And the fact that he is, a, as a runner, he's here, a runner. That's the big difference here, right? Correct. He's not defenseless. I just don't think that's targeting. I think they're going to change After further this. review, there is no foul for targeting. It'll be first down and 10. And so, Fauche stays in the game because Burton spinning there, not giving himself up. If he's a quarterback right. and he goes into that slide, now, by definition, you are defenseless. That's automatic but targeting. the fact that he is spinning means he's a not he's not defenseless. He was still a runner. Gotcha. Good call by the officiating crew. So Fouché stays in the game. Still a first down scramble, though, for yeah. Austin Burton. I, again, a tough run by Burton. Just trying to find a way to move the chains for this offense. And they may be taking Burton off the field for a potential head Since injury. Since there was no foul for targeting, number 12 has to sit out of play by rule. So they picked the flag up. He lost his helmet. He has to come off for a play. And that was recognized late by the officials. So Michael Alima will come in to run at least one play as the quarterback, first and 10 near midfield. And Alima will throw. Rolls out. And hoists it to the sideline just to throw it away with Greg Penn all over him. And Austin Burton will come right back in. Austin Burton's grandfather, a college football Hall of Fame running back at Northwestern. First ever draft pick of the Boston Patriots back in 1960. His dad played quarterback at Northwestern. His mom was an All-American swimmer at Northwestern. His sister, three-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in basketball at Northwestern. Devin Mockaby to midfield, and then Austin bucked the trend and went out to UCLA to begin his career. And now at Purdue. And was in a relatively competitive quarterback battle with Aiden O'Connell for the great majority of last year. And Aiden kind of up and down. Guys played at different moments. And then Aiden kind of took the job this year. But even in that competition, remained great friends with Aiden O'Connell, who has gone on to get ready for the NFL draft. And Burton with an opportunity today. 
Third down and five. Four man rush and a first down. Tyrone Tracy moves the chains to the LSU 41. Yeah, really good job of throwing away from pressure. Pressure comes here. That linebacker is going to leave. And here comes Tracy on that quick little slant. You got to give your eyes to the quarterback. Really good job sitting in that space on that zone pressure. Very good job. Oftentimes, quarterbacks, you can make the choice. If it, you're thrown into pressure, you want to replace. Thrown away from pressure, sit away from dropping defenders. Now it's a shot play down the sideline. And that was terrific coverage as Jay Ward was all over Mershon Rice. Nowhere to put that football for Austin Burton. He still drops a nice little throw in there. It's just that Rice is so close to the sideline there by Jay Ward getting squeezed out of bounds. Track the ball, track the ball. It's dropped in there relatively well. Just really so much, such little space to that sideline. Maccabee, the fake perfectly executed. Off of Ferry, has a first down. A little rollout by Austin Burton, picked up 11. Yeah, Ferry starts on the right side. You're going to get pressure off the ledge by Perkins, okay? He's going to come here. Ferry is just going to leak. You're going to get a little bit of a ball fake, so now that Perkins is in that bind. There goes Ferry leaking right behind him, avoid contact, and then there's a, one of those easy flat completions up for that offense. Anticipating the blitz, Ferry, make sure you don't get hit by Perkins. Easy throw. Another fake. And that shot down the sideline again. Jarek Bernard Converse picks off Austin Burton, and LSU has it back. This is just a great play by Jarek Bernard Converse. You're trying to take advantage of him, and he's going to be a post. Now, this is... Bernard Converse right here, okay? Now, Perferi's going to be the guy that's trying to leak down. He's got a great job of vision back to the quarterback the whole time. Now you're going to see this baseball turn at the very top. Spin over the top like a center fielder. And there's that interception. It's really good job of playing on top. Having vision to the quarterback. Perferi's trying to leak down there, and it's just a better play by the senior cornerback. A flag came out after the interception. Might have been on the celebration for LSU. Let's see. The ruling on the field is an interception by the defense. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct. LSU number 24. That's his first of the game. Half the distance to the goal. First down, LSU. So the return was out to the 25-yard line. So the half the distance penalty brings it back to about the 12. But LSU does take over with 3.11 to go before halftime, and they've got a couple of timeouts as well. So the second interception this season by Jarek Bernard Converse. And even up 28-0 with the football. Brian Kelly not happy that that flag dropped out. So the long field out in front of LSU, but they put together four consecutive touchdown drives. Nussmeyer back in. So Garrett Nussmeyer, one for one in terms of touchdown drives that he's had an opportunity to engineer. And he'll throw. Mason Taylor makes another catch. Up to the 18-yard line. He has six. I like the way Nussmeyer spins it, man. He really does. It's a, it's a twitchy release. Redshirt freshman. Very aggressive. Gunslinger type of mentality because he is such a talented thrower of the football. Ball comes out quick. Four-man rush. Well protected. To the sideline to Kyron Lacey. First down. 
Now, Lacey's going to have a stop route. I want everyone to see the timing of this throw, okay? This is Lacey. He's going to have a stop route. Now, one, two, three. Now, Nussmeier is letting go of that football right now, and he's got to have a drive to the sideline. Ball's thrown on that left shoulder. Man, how about those late hands by Lacey? But there's that timing and rhythm. One, two, three, ball out. And you got to trust that that receiver is going to be at that spot. Single high, throw it outside again. He's looking that way. Floats one wide open. It's Neighbors. Makes a man miss, almost, at the 45-yard line. Good shoestring tackle by Bryce Hampton. But it's another 15-yard gain for LSU. Yeah, they're getting pretty generic coverage right now, Bobby. Single high safety, all three snaps to start this drive. You saw the out route to Taylor, the stop route to Lacey, and now a little bit of a slot out or corner to Malik Neighbors. Very clear picture for the quarterback right now. Jet sweep. Is it a trick play? Neighbors wants to throw. He'll unload one up the seam. Catch is made by Lacey. Still on his feet to the 10 yard line. First and goal, 45 yards on the wide receiver to wide receiver. Neighbors to Lacey Bob. Mike Denbrock, play caller, offensive coordinator for LSU, just dialing it up. The middle of the field's open if you want it. Nussmeyer. Dumps one off. Ryan Thomas. An easy cruising touchdown. Middle of the field open, the sides of the field are open, the deep field's open, <laughs> the, the field underneath is, is open. open, Bobby. Right now, the field is open for the LSU offense. That that's, goes, that's five in a row. How about the trick play, though? I mean, you're up 28 nothing. You got a young quarterback in there that you wanted to get some reps in. You start off essentially what began as a two-minute drive and capitalize it very quickly on five-play, 87-yard touchdown. Three hundred and sixty five yards of total offense in the first half for LSU. Yeah, so this is going to be that reverse pass. There goes neighbors. Now these guys watch they just come off the ball kind of boring like they're going to be blockers. OK. And as everybody on LSU defensively is going to now become attackers thinking that it's a reverse. Then you slip behind them. Good little throw by neighbors down there as well. Lacey kind of making a guy miss for this offense and then you saw Brian Thomas on that shallow cross here comes this shallow cross now watch these zone defenders underneath for Purdue offensively defensively shallow shallow climb 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 everybody collapses from the right side and there's that shallow that's called a progression quarterback go one to two to three and as defenders follow your eyes see how his eyes start left climb 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 they come back to the middle of the field keep a wide base touchdown really well done by the LSU offense and a really impressive drive by Garrett Nussmeyer. Me and you are doing that at halftime. At dance. At the media buffet. <laughs> Been an impressive play er, performance and showing right now by LSU. And a touchback for Purdue with a minute seven on the clock. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, more driven. You can see LSU averaging nearly 10 yards per play here in the first half. And they have as many total yards on their last possession alone as Purdue has in the first 29 minutes. And both teams have opt-outs. Both teams have important players sure. missing. But sure. what we're seeing is the depth of talent for LSU. They can absorb those opt-outs <laughs> in a way that Purdue just can't. Burton almost picked. Micah Baskerville jumped in front of Maccabee and knocked it away. Bobby, I think it's also, too, one program and team knows everything about what their future looks like, certainly over the next at least year. Brian Kelly, 
leading LSU, taking on some transfers that he said, I got to fit the right pieces into this program. And then for Purdue, and we've talked about that a little bit in this first half, and we will in the second half. There's a lot of unknown for their program, and certainly attached to their players moving forward. Huckabee on the swing pass, picks up a first down. These players have been through a lot for Purdue. Accomplished a lot over the past couple years, and Brian Brom being a part of that for six years, it, they, they've really changed kind of the, the expectations of this program. Abdul Rahman Gassim for eight yards as we're down to the final 43 seconds of the opening half. Purdue has all three timeouts trying to get on the board before halftime. Four-man rush under pressure and a sack. Nowhere to go for Austin Burton. Of the half, it'll be 30 seconds in lane. Xavier Carter gets the sack and a timeout is called by the Boilermakers. 30 seconds to go in the half. And the matchup for the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T now set. TCU and Georgia next Monday at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. Pre-game coverage will be all day. We'll have you covered for the game on every platform, TV, radio, digital. So many ways to watch and listen to the biggest game of the year. And hopefully it lives up to what we saw in the semifinals because those were two thrillers. How crazy was it when, you know, the ending of the Georgia-Ohio State games happening as the ball is dropping? I mean, both games were must-see television. So impressed by the way that Georgia, first of all, the timeout called by Kirby Smart on that fake punt that Ryan Day for Ohio State had dialed up, and then the, you know, the clutch, never-blinking play by Stetson Bennett, and then, you know, TCU just kept answering um, anything that Michigan threw at it and just an incredibly per impressive performance. Another sack. Makai Wingo with Harold Perkins helping collapse the pocket. And let's see if that takes us to halftime. It's fourth down and it doesn't look like Brian Kelly's going to call a timeout. Up by three scores, unless maybe he does with 14 seconds to go in the half. So, yes, LSU will call a timeout before fourth down. This LSU defensive line and just some of the pressure packages are starting to dominate. Perkins kind of squeezes the pocket. Wingo beats that left guard, excuse me, the left tackle. Austin Burton's been under, under duress for the great majority of this football game. Just the speed, the strength, the size, the athleticism, and some of the versatility that's been displayed by really the front seven by LSU. Tough for a Purdue offense that's been shorthanded to handle. So again, Jack Ansel will punt. And he gets away an end-over-end kick. Fair catch. Back to the 29-yard line by Clayton. Well, this season, All-State will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you to All-State. And they added a little bit of time to the clock. So LSU with one timeout. 20 seconds from their own 29-yard line. And it'll be Jaden Daniels back at quarterback. I can't nope. imagine that LSU tries to do something here offensively. Why not just, yeah, it looks like they're going to take a knee and go into halftime. And that is what Daniels will do, and that will take us to the halftime break. And that's the first time, if you count the kneel down, in six straight possessions that LSU didn't score a touchdown. They had five in a row. And when we come back, Kevin Nagandi and Dan Mullen will have the TikTok halftime report. Dominant first half for LSU. 35-0. They lead Purdue. Don't go away. 
First half performance as we take a look at today's road test. Dan, brought to you by Goodyear. It's been a little bit of everything from this LSU football team early on. Offensive line, pass protection, great. You kick it out to your true freshman. Mason Taylor, you get to see his athleticism. Then down in the red zone, some of those road graders for Noah Kane have been dominant. And their defense has been absolutely spectacular. Great coverage. Jarek Bernard Converse with a late half interception. Anything that you could have wanted from your football team has been on display. Very good tackling from their defensive unit. And Brian Kelly's got to be very excited with the way that his team has handled the first 30 minutes of this football game. Well, those numbers tell the story. A largest halftime lead for LSU while shutting out an FBS opponent since 2004. Bob Shoes and Dan Orlovsky and Chris Budden here at Camping World Stadium. It'll be a touchback to start the third quarter for the Boilermakers. And again, this game really is a celebration of the year that both of these teams have had. In spite of the first half that Purdue played, yeah. they made great progress as a program. And we're going to talk to their head coach, new head coach, Ryan Walters, coming up a little bit later on this quarter. And the impact that Brian Kelly had as well at LSU. I'm excited for that conversation we get to have with Coach Walters. Just kind of the vision that he has, why he chose Purdue, what he's maybe something he's liked to have to have seen in the first 30 minutes and then for brian kelly and for lsu just the really encapsulation of what has been a phenomenal first year for their program with him as the head coach and you know what they can look forward to heading into 2023. devin mockaby picks up six yards on first down and if mockaby can have an 80 yard day he'd be the seventh 1000 yard rusher in Purdue history, 920 yards as a former walk-on redshirt freshman that was fourth on the depth chart at tailback when he got to Purdue. Burton to throw, swing pass out to the flat. That's incomplete, so it'll be third down and four. Chris Button. Spoke with both coaches. Brian Kelly really proud of the business-like approach that his players have taken in that first half. He said obviously they're having fun, but they're also executing the game plan that we gave them. Both quarterbacks playing well. He said defensively it's the first time they've ever had this 3-3-5 stack, and our guys are flying around proud of how they've handled the atmosphere. For Brian Brom, his message at halftime was, you got two quarters left for this remaining season. Go out there, fight, be proud of what you put on that field. An option toss to Maccabee. And he is just shy of the line to gain. About a yard short, Greg Brooks with the stop. It'll be fourth down and one. And it looks like Purdue will line up to go for it. So impressed by the overall speed from LSU defensively so far this afternoon. LSU trying to substitute, and they may get caught with too many men on the field. Maccabee drives forward. Not sure he picked up the first down, but flags in the secondary as because Purdue didn't substitute, they didn't have to wait for LSU to counter and 12 minutes. Illegal on the field. substitution, defense number 17, five yard penalty, first down. One. Carter's that last piece that couldn't get off. You're going to see 17 running to the sideline to try to get off. Really good job by Purdue using that tempo, catching that defense off guard. 12 men on the field. So a fourth down conversion by penalty. Burton off play action. Middle screen for Maccabee and threw it over his head and took a shot from Guillory once again. It looked like they had it blocked up if Burton could have hit Maccabee. Yeah, this is a phenomenal job defensively, excuse me, offensively. Look at you've got these blockers that are going to be out in front for your offense. I mean, one, two, three, if you get that completion out to Maccabee. I talked about a little bit in that first half, Bobby, calling some early down screens. There's a big opportunity for Purdue to hit a huge game for their offense. Maccabee tries the edge. And gets driven out of bounds by Fouché. Picked up five. You know, Brian Brom to Chris's report said you got two quarters left to kind of finish off this season. I, I can promise you 45. Maccabee will not be one of those guys that you have to question how hard he's going to play. That guy runs incredibly hard, slippery. He's going to find a hole or create one. You know, he's going to be a very much so building block for new head coach Ryan Walters for the future of this program. Four 100-yard games this season 
for Devin Makovic. Burton on the move again. Good job to just get it away in time as he found Sheffield. Micah Baskerville all over Austin Burton. Only a gain of two, but it could have been a big loss. So once again, fourth down. And they'll go for it on fourth and four. Yeah, if you're Purdue right now, you're thinking, okay, Brian Kelly's squad is going to come after us. Pr bring pressure. They're going to play some man coverage. You think something where you, you get a pick, a rub, something where you can get an offensive guard running away from defense. Four-man rush. The slant broken up by Baskerville. And LSU will take over on downs. Trying to get a quick little slant in there. Defensively, LSU has vision on the quarterback. Baskerville almost picks it off. LSU football. To specifically hold a two-ounce bag of cheese. In. Now you're talking. Shot from Daniels. One-on-one. -on -one. Incomplete. Inside the five-yard line, hoping for Brian Thomas. Just a little bit. I don't know if Thomas maybe lost it in some sun or something, but he's peeking back for the ball and just feels like he's got a little bit of a miss timing or poor adjustment on the ball. If he just continues to run, I think shield the defender. That's going to be a touchdown for LSU. Javon Grigsby was back in coverage. As obviously, LSU has really thinned out that Purdue secondary today. Here you go. Free access. Incomplete behind Kyron Lacy, so it'll be third down and ten. Yeah, just a miss there. I mean, that's an easy throw and catch from Jaden Daniels to Lacy. Early on in this game, we saw just that slight miscommunication on some of their passes, and that one just could have a little bit more touch on it out to Lacy. Purdue shows blitz. Yeah, Let's see, see if they bring pressure. I think they're going to drop out. It looked like a blitz bluff, Bob. So right now, as an offense, you're okay. If they bring pressure, who's the hot answer? And if they blow out of there, you're trying to see your coverage and read where well, you got to throw the football. They do drop back and rush only four. All day for Daniels. Long throw. Short of the first down line to gain by Ibieta, But it looks like he may have squeezed it within a foot. And now they say without measurement first down that he got the ball to the 35-yard line. So Landon Ibieta makes the catch and moves the chains. Yeah, Purdue blows out of there and essentially plays what is a Tampa 2. Mike Linebacker runs through. Only four guys rushing. Great job again in protection. Enough people time-wise to get the ball out. Keeper. Daniels, five yards. Knocked down by Bryce Hampton. You know, for LSU next year, it's really, if you look at the perimeter players, Bob, because Jack Besh transferring Booty, going to the NFL, and then Jare Jenkins being a senior, looking Brian Thomas and neighbors as being like those receivers on the perimeter, and then does a Kyron Lacey step forward, or do they have some five-star young freshmen that are going to come in and be counted on in their pass game? There's that timing. Brian Thomas makes the catch. He's got the first down, and who will the quarterback be? Fair point. You, you would anticipate it's Jaden Daniels, right? But, you know, Garrett Nussmeyer there, again, as a redshirt freshman, he's had some moments. And so I think that you go into the year thinking it's going to be Jaden Daniels because of the success he's had this year. But there's a lot that happens in college football. Well, the only player that ever had more yards of total offense in a season for LSU than Jaden Daniels was Joe Burrow's historic 6,000-yard season when they won the championship. He's looking for more for neighbors here. Incomplete, underthrown. And he could not reach over the top of Cameron Childers, Ch Camden Childers, pardon me, to make the catch. That's the second best year in LSU history in terms of total offense. Look at the first year. Is that an That's, accurate number? Joe Burrow yes. has 6,000 yards of offense? It's probably the best offensive year we've ever seen in college football. I mean, I knew it was remarkable, but 6,000 yards. It's a lot. 15-0. Huh. And, of course, the national champs breaking tackles Noah Kane. 
And he is inside the 15 with an LSU first down. Chris. Bob, in today's day of college football, you're also recruiting guys that are still on your roster. Mike Denbrock told us that after the season, he sat down with James Daniels, said, here's our plan for you. You try to address it proactively. He let Daniels go through uh, his process, talk with whoever he needed. But just because those are the numbers isn't a definite that they're on your team next year. you got to continue to recruit the guys that are on your roster. And, and, and to Chris's point, Jaden needed another year in college football. If he's thinking about the NFL, it'll be beneficial for him. Beneficial for him to continue to learn under Brian Kelly, to continue to learn under play caller Mike Denbrock. Don't forget, they sent Desmond Ritter when they were at, ten at Cincinnati Denbrock to the NFL. So it's a very good thing for him to sit another, at least spend another year in college football and develop as a passer. Well, Jaden Daniels, only three interceptions during the season. He only had one when we had the Tennessee game earlier this year. And I thought it was interesting when Brian Kelly told us, I don't know that that's a positive. Right, he wanted to be more yes. aggressive. Yeah. I want a quarterback that learns how to take some chances, push the ball downfield, and every now and then, you pay for that with an interception. Here's the direct snap to Emery, and the end around to Neighbors. He's going to throw it Philly special style to Jaden Daniels for the touchdown. So another trick play for LSU. And the second time that Neighbors has been the thrower of the football, successfully so. Yeah, so pay attention to Jaden Daniels right now. As he walks to the line of scrimmage, it looks like he's going to have some form of communication. I'm changing the play. Now Emery takes the direct snap, and you're just going to see just hesitation here and then leak to the flat. And here comes Neighbors on that reverse pass. We saw it a little bit in that first half. He took that long shot to Kyron Lacey. And then there's a great sell job by Daniels, Emery, and Neighbors for a little bit of a Philly special touchdown. Michigan probably watching saying, I wish we would have executed as well as LSU did. Well, it's been a tough day for Purdue, but the future is very bright. And their new head coach, Ryan Walters, is going to join us when we come back. But Philly special allows Jaden Daniels to get into the end zone. We'll talk to the new head coach when we come back. And Coach Walters, who put him on scholarship, that must be a nice way to make your debut. Congratulations. How about that moment? Yeah, that was awesome. You know, like I said in the, in the team meeting, we had played against him and throughout that week of preparation. We found out that he was a, a walk-on kid. Um, and just the way he ran, the, you know, how hard it was to bring him down. Um, I thought, you know, shoot, this is the easiest decision I've ever made. And it's my first one as a head coach. Why don't I just put him on scholarship? So. Thanks for sitting, by the way, making us look good. Yeah, I'm sitting down. Build a little cred with your up. team as well. I mean, like, oh, yeah. They're like, sit down, Dan. Okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you, Coach, you know, I think the first time I met you, you were as defensive coordinator at Mizzou in the bowl game, and then a couple times with Illinois. Kind of who are some of the people coaching-wise that have shaped the type of coach you are going to be for Purdue? Yeah, you know, I've been around so many uh, great guys. Uh, you start with Mike Stoops, um, Greg Brown, Bob Stoops, John Scladani, uh, you know, Barry Odom, David Gibbs. Um, and then here, you know, or, or at Illinois this past season, you know, Brett Bielema, Andy Boo, Kevin Kane, Aaron Henry, and uh, Terrence Jameson, we all just bounced ideas off each other and um, and really grew something to what it was today. What kind of coach is Purdue co getting? Like, who, who are you as a coach um, if you had to define yourself? You know, I'm, I'm no ego. You know, I don't care who gets the credit. I just want to get the job done the right way. Um, I'm a teacher first. You know, we, um, I'm going to bring guys in that are the same way. Yeah. I'm um, an ultra competitive. You know, I don't care what we're doing. If we're playing uh, football, we're playing pickup hoops, or we're playing Monopoly, I'm trying to beat you. I'm trying to beat you bad. I'm going <laughs> to let, let you know about it. Well, Greg Brooks with a pick of Alimo. That gives the ball back to LSU. So a tough day today for your future team. But having said that, when they had all their pieces, this was one of the few offenses that actually put up numbers against your Illinois defense. It seems like the future is pretty bright with this program. Yeah, no doubt. You know, I think they scored 30 on us, 31 to be exact, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, they were a tough task. You know, we, we had dealt with some things, and um, they were able to capitalize on it. Um, but, you know, this, this group is a competitive group, uh, one that's put up a lot of points here in the, in the, in the recent history. Uh, so I, I hope I can just come in and, and raise and elevate the standard. And you know this league, obviously, this is the league you've lived in of late. Now you're a head coach in this league, and, you know, Purdue traditionally not a lot of success. So wh what's the formula? Like yeah. at, a, at a school like Purdue, when you're dealing with the Ohio States and Penn States and Wisconsin's and Michigan's of the world, 
What is the formula in your mind for success specifically with this program? Well, I think you got to be a little bit different on both sides of the ball. You know, the, obviously they've had success off offensively by spreading it around, um, which isn't typically what people do in a, a big ten and on our side of the conference. Um, and then at Illinois, we were different on defense. And so yeah. I think if you if you bring um, both sides of the ball to, to be a little bit different in a conference that was you know, pretty traditional, you know, I think that, that will allow us to close that gap. What, what about, for you, what about Purdue was appealing? You know, you only get, I understand that it's an opportunity, but what about that institution made you feel, yep, this is this is where I go take that opportunity? Yeah, you know, we played there a year ago, just to, you know, we, we were both like 500 teams. It was an 11 a.m. kick, and, you know, we got some warm-ups, and it's like a packed house. Oh, really? Uh, so just the, the game day environment, the fan support, um, and then going through the interview process uh, with Mike Babinski and Tiffany Grimes, I uh, just seen the alignment there with the university, the athletic department, and um, what their vision was, was, um, you know, we spoke the same language, um, and, and they realized what it takes to get there, what kind of resources we're going to need. Uh, so we have the, that alignment coupled with the, uh, you know, obviously the, the prestigious academic institution in a, in a the, you know, the best conference in college football um, on a side that I'm familiar with. Yeah. You know, to me, it was a, it was a no-brainer and, and a dream come true. And how about how the world is changing as well? The two L.A. schools on their way to the Big Ten. That, it's an ever-changing landscape. When, when you look at the Big Ten and its future and also Purdue's place in it, what do you see? Yeah, I see opportunity. You know, I think that's another thing that um, was exciting for me and for the administration is, you know, the, the college landscape is ever-changing. So uh, for me to come in on the front end of it, you know, I'm probably more ready, more prepared than somebody that's been a head coach for 20 years, right? If you look at any kind of corporation, that's a good point. If you've been doing the same thing for 15 plus years, and all of a sudden now you have to change, that that change can be difficult. You fight that change. Where um, obviously the, ch the game is changing, but well, I'm I'm here for it. I look at it as an opportunity. All right. Well, you're the DC. I'm gonna put you to work here. Third and four now. <laughs> you need a stop after Come the pick. On. Got a 15 yard penalty to push it back near midfield so is, is this a pressure spot for you when you're dialing it up well if you if you have seen my games um, i like to bring pressure on oh, third yeah. downs and play tight coverage so you don't want to give this six or seven yard cushion on the perimeter uh, nussmeyer back in at quarterback there you go and there is the pitch and catch out to the edge that's a first down to thomas um can we come back on camera because i think it's, it's important for the purdue family to see not only is the new head coach, he's young, but he's got a sweet pair of shoes on. I don't know if you can hear. Let me, let me yeah, balance. Just got, you know, just the top clothes. Just the top clothes. Uh, I like that's that. the first thing you notice. That, I mean, that's going to matter with recruiting. You yeah. know, Dion's going to Colorado, and he's got a little bit of swag to him. Brian, well, you know, I talk about we, we've got some notes on your defense here. So five times you held opponents to under seven points this year at Illinois. Ten times you held them to, excuse me, seven times under ten. And then your top ten in 17 different rankings yeah everyone says it's really difficult to play defense in today's football no matter what the level I guess my question is how have you somehow as Emory runs off a, a big run again how have you been able to still play really high level defense everywhere you've been well you know I think here lately what, what we've done is we've just thought about defense like an air raid offense and okay. so we try to you know, present the, the same picture pre-snap to the offense um, and then post-snap will get complicated. And it's, yep. you know, it's simple for us in terms of teaching, in terms of responsibilities, but it's difficult for the quarterback. And so what I'm trying to do um, is, is not play against the offensive coordinator anymore. I want to play against the quarterback. Okay. Interesting. Um, and so if we can do that, then I, I like our chances. Uh, first down in the red zone here for LSU. Again, with Garrett Nussmeyer back in at quarterback. He's led a couple of touchdown drives. Keeps it on the ground with Emery. And he is stopped after a gain of a couple to the 11. H how much interaction or, or time have you spent with Drew Brees? And it's, it, been, it's been really fun. Yeah, anything you know, that you've, you've learned that you could share that has been pretty impactful? You know, just like he is on all the time. Yeah. You know, he's been retired now for I don't know how many years. Um, you know, if you, if you watch him warm up, like he, he's dealt with a lot, of, a lot of injuries in that right shoulder, you know. Um, but he is always on. Um, he's always, you know, high character, high IQ, and, and tries to give you tidbits um, of information wherever he can. And I think the most impressive thing is that he's just an everyday guy, yeah. you know. No ego and, and just willing to help with, with whatever he can. Malik Neighbors down inside the two-yard line with a first down. So it will be first and goal for LSU. And it looked like they wanted to play with some tempo. We'll see. But players right now jawing a bit, having to be separated by the officials. 
What's, what's the calendar for you like? You know, this game gets done at 4.30 Eastern time. Is it get back? To get back. And get rolling. Get rolling. 7 a.m. staff. So here Tomorrow. we go. Absolutely. Wow. So as LSU lines up to go for it here at the two-yard line, Coach, thanks so much for the time. I appreciate we you We really appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with us. And best of luck. Fascinated to see what you guys are able to do. Thank you. Off yeah. of this terrific year for Purdue. Absolutely. Thanks a million. Thanks. Coach, good to see you, man. You good too. luck, man. Congratulations. Yep. Be pulling for you. The new head coach of the Boilermakers, Ryan Walters, only 37 years old, coming up later on this month. And now a false start is called against LSU. So that'll back them up a handful of yards. I thought very interesting kind of philosophical way to talk about playing defense. I'm not playing against the offense. Yeah. I'm not playing against the offensive coordinator. I'm playing against the quarterback. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've ever heard it phrased that way. Yeah, and I just think it's a very direct way that he kind of formulates his plan defensively. I think that my big takeaway after spending that time with him, Bob, is just how natural he feels. You know, he wasn't seemed very comfortable in who he is and in his own skin and wasn't trying to be perfect or uh, somebody that isn't just a very natural person. Now Smyer lob into the end zone and interception. So finally that Purdue defense is able to get a stop. Jamari Brown with a pick. The Kentucky transfer in perfect position to pick off Nussmeyer. The line is Mississippi State minus three and a half. Are you kidding me? An all-time bad beat, Marcus Banks, 60 yards to the house. ISBPI Stanford Steve and his Mississippi State, 19 to 10. Back to you, Bob. Oh, either the greatest or worst beat of all time, depending on your perspective. That is an amazing finish. Alimo. On the run as he replaces Austin Burton, a quarterback gets up the sideline and gets walloped out of bounds by Guillory. So Michael Olimo, redshirt sophomore from Montvale, New Jersey. Played his high school football at St. Joe's Montvale, and he gets an opportunity after not playing at all last season and going five of seven as a backup behind Aiden O'Connell and Austin Burton this season to play here in the second half against LSU. And this is probably the player that you know, Ryan Walters really wants to see is a guy that, you know, Austin Burton is moving on. Aiden O'Connell is moving on. Alimo is a guy that right now is a part of their program in the future. Maccabi. Goes nowhere. It'll be fourth down as West Weeks and Greg Penn combine on the stop. So the punt group will come out as Drew Brees continues to try and mentor these young quarterbacks. As Alimo actually will be sticking around Purdue. Of course, Austin Burton, a sixth year senior, and Aiden O'Connell both moving on. They've got Brady Allen as a true freshman, Indiana Mr. Football on the bench as well. Line drive punt, Clayton. Fair catch at his own 24 yard line. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear, or driven. Penn State and Utah and the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential coming up at 5 Eastern over on ESPN. Back to the offense for LSU and Gary Nussmeyer. End around to Neighbors. As a crease, Malik Neighbors down the sideline. Stays in bounds with a cutback. House call. Another LSU touchdown.
Davalos with the point after. And it's 49-0 LSU. Just one of those jet sweeps. It forces everybody on the defense to run horizontally. So there goes neighbors. Now watch what happens to the defense for Purdue. Really good job of flowing to the football by offensively. Now Emery's going to lead block, and there's this neighbors with that foot in the ground seam. See that jet sweep? Everybody flows defensively. You lead block. Your tailback is an extra blocker. Lacey downfield, and then there's just pure speed and athleticism by Malik Neighbors. That's why some of that horizontal motion indoor jet sweeps are so good. You get the defense flow inside down the sideline. You gain advantage in your run game with Emery as a lead blocker, and then, my goodness, six foot five, a buck 95, the sophomore. Runaway speed. Does that count as the easiest touchdown pass Garrett Nussmeyer has ever that. thrown? I was just gonna say that. So neighbors now, that actually is a touchdown reception, just yep. that little bump ahead, jet sweep, forward pass. And neighbors now with a touchdown reception and a touchdown passing. And again, week 17 tonight, Monday Night Football, a big matchup in the AFC. Bills, Bengals in Cincinnati, 8.15 Eastern, 5.15 Pacific on ESPN, ABC, ESPN2, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Plus. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 7 on ESPN2. And tough to get a better quarterback matchup than this one. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Josh Allen is one of the most indefensible players, probably the most indefensible quarterback in the NFL when he's used in their run game for Buffalo. And Joe is just, Joe has developed this great ability to understand exactly how to play versus the defense on a week-to-week -week basis in the NFL. Last year, you know, his connection with Jamar Chase, and it was just these giant big plays down the field, and now teams are playing a lot of too high defense, shell, zone coverage, and they're not allowing that, and Joe's just become this kind of tactician where everything is just a pick you apart offense. And hard to think in the AFC of three places that would be harder to go play on the road if they were the one seed than those three places if you count Kansas City in that mix as well as Sheffield makes the catch. So you know those three teams are going to be playing all out these last two weeks. Not only do you want the bye, but if you're Buffalo or say Kansas City, I mean, you want everything to go through your building in front of your crowd. Yeah, I, I think Cincinnati's probably best, better suited to go on the road just because they feel like they have a more complete defense. They've ran the football a little bit better, but I think all three of those teams very much so want that one seed. There's a crease for Tracy. And Tyrone Tracy across midfield is brought down after a gain of 14. So the one seed hangs in the balance, according to ESPN analytics. Almost an even split between the Chiefs and Bills as to which team is going to get the top seed. But the Bengals, of course, if they can win tonight, very much alive. And there's another strip sack. Alamo lost the football. Harold Perkins all over him. And it looks like Alamo got it back just before Guillory could jump on top. Yeah, this is Perkins, okay? I want everyone to watch how he gets off the football. And just watch the left hand. Look at, swipe at the ball. How great is that? Just that swipe at the football right at the very end. Don't go for the sack, but go for the ball. Just the speed, the athleticism, the technique and all that, but just that left hand, very impressive. Second down and long. Another handoff to Tyrone Tracy. Three yards. So it will be third down and about 14. As Quincy Wiggins made the stop for LSU. Receiver screen to Yassin. Gets a block, reaches the ball out. Very close to a first down. I think they gave him forward progress with the ball reached out to the line again. Major Burns tried to tie him up, and they will say without measurement that Abdur Rahman Yassin picked up the first down. Perimeter screen, just getting that ball into that alley. Yassin does a nice job of following blockers and then reaching for that first down for Purdue offensively. 
handoff again to Tyrone Tracy. Again, Tracy is kind of that Swiss Army knife player. Matt can play wide receiver, can play in the backfield, but Purdue really thinned out at running back, so Tracy gets a chance here. And that takes us to the end of the third quarter of the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl. It's been a big day for LSU. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Interesting quarterback matchup down. Yeah, Cam Rising is one of those players where ever since he's gotten to Utah, he's kind of resuscitated that program, certainly at the quarterback spot. And then for Sean Clifford, he's just been at Penn State for such a long time. He's held so many different records there. You know, it's a, he, he's had a very strong career as their, as their starting quarterback. A little trick play here dialed up as Yassin took the backwards pass and found T.J. Sheffield down to the 11-yard line. 27-yard gain. So Purdue with their own gadget play, and it works. Yeah, a little bit of good throw by a little back shoulder. Ah, come on. Great adjustment by... Sheffield, maybe pretty good throw by scene, man. So the Purdue offense trying to get on the board early in the fourth quarter. And it looks like this play blown dead before it false starts. Start. A false start. Offense number 89, five yard penalty, first down. And it's Paul Paferi, the tight end. Remember this Purdue, Purdue offense is with, without Charlie Jones, Payne Durham. We've talked about Aiden O'Connell. So you're talking about 166 catches and 20 touchdowns really gone between those two premier players. And Paul Paferi is a player that had some good moments at tight end. Is going to be leaned on certainly next year for this offense. They think the jet sweep and then throw it down the rail to Sheffield. And he finds the end zone finally for Purdue. They're on the board. Fourth touchdown of the season for T.J. Sheffield. It's, a re it's really a different version of what we call all go special. You're going to see this guy clear and then seam and seam. Your tailback is really replacing that wide receiver. And as everybody flows for LSU defensively, there's that check down. They carry it vertically. The tailback and wide receiver essentially switch responsibilities. And then Sheffield becomes the check down for Alimo. So finally, Mitchell Finneran with a chance to put one through, and he does. And Purdue is on the board, just over a minute gone by here in the fourth quarter. First touchdown pass for Alimo as Sheffield hits Pater. About to get the football back with a 42 point lead. Bob Schusen here with Dan Orlovsky and Chris Budden. In Orlando. And this will be a touchback. Back to Kevin. Bob, plenty of offense in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Caleb Williams looking really good. The Heisman winner to Brendan Rice here, Dan. Yeah, and it's what he does. He stays alive, scrambling into the rush, eyes downfield. But his ability and arm talent to make throws off balance is unreal. Uh, USC's defense, eh, not good. Tajay Spears, after a big run, then eventually punches it in. They do not get the two-point conversion. 35-30 USC. And coming up, the granddaddy of them all. Look at that. James Franklin and Penn State remembering Penn State and Steeler legend Franklin. Franco Harris passed away last month with the 34 jersey. Penn State, Utah, the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential. Coming your way, 5 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Kevin. And the third quarterback that we are seeing today for LSU, a fumbled exchange for Walker Howard, the freshman, as Derek Davis tries to bail him out and loses real estate back to the 20-yard line. So the true freshman... Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Louisiana gets a chance as Jaden Daniels and Garrett Nussmeyer put up 49 points through three quarters. Power to throw on second and 15. Batted ball at the line, falls incomplete. Thank you. 
Well, you factor in Malik Neighbors as a thrower of the football. Three different players with a touchdown pass in a bowl game for mm -hmm. LSU, the first team in the last 25 years to do that. Could Walker Hauer make it four? You're really asking our research guys <laughs> to go deep. Come on, fellas. <laughs> Four-man rush on third and 15. He's going to take a shot. Jump ball intended for Ibieta. And it will be fourth and 15. Yeah, taking their shot downfield to Ibieta. Walker Howard launches it. Good Why not? from Grigsby. Yeah. Purdue, listen, outmanned, but they're playing hard. Their, their players are, are playing as hard and as competitive as they can, can with 13 minutes left in this fourth quarter. First punt since the first possession for LSU as T.J. Sheffield drops back to receive the kick of Bramblett. And he just does get it away. Spiraling kick. Returnable. Sheffield from the 27. And a good return. Breaking some tackles and getting to midfield. 22-yard return. The cheese it citrus bowl. There might be some cheese it's in that dish. <laughs> so international. You don't think that could be a, a you know what? Send that to McAfee right now. <laughs> Deion Burks. As Purdue has their best starting field position of the day, and they pick up four yards on first down. West Weeks made the stop. I don't know what that thing flying behind the, the blimp was. I think it might have been an airplane. Uh, it could have been something else. <laughs> <laughs> Area 51 guy. Send it to McAfee's people. <laughs> Alimo swings one out to Tyrone Tracy. And he's got three more. You know, Bobby, when, during this bowl season, it's always interesting to talk to these coaches given the, like, the state of college football right now and hear them talk about how they handle this, you know, two, three, four week, depending on the team period. And talking with Brian Kelly, you know, Coach, what was the last couple weeks like for your program getting ready for this bowl game? And he just said, uh, last few weeks we focused on recruiting. The transfer portal he's trying to build a roster not only for you know for the future but also to chris's point that retention and that football had been like the fun part of the past couple weeks because he's got to have a very good feel for what the program needs and his the thing that he said that stood out to me was his they need freshmen to develop and then take over this program and he's got to figure out what's the best piece or what are the best pieces for the 85 not just an acquisition of talent and i think that's so interesting to hear coaches talk in that regard rather than what it was before this transfer portal conversation became a big deal well, purdue turns it over on downs as the alimo fourth down pass sails out and listen to the biggest game of the year and that is a week away. Walker Howard, another chance with good field position for LSU near midfield. And the freshman out to the edge to Ibieta. Four yards on first down. Grigsby drove him back. We were talking about this earlier, Dan, but to me, TCU, from a physicality standpoint, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Michigan. Sure. They didn't give it up inside the 10-yard line. They were tough in the red zone. They forced field goals early. They ran the ball themselves. That was not supposed to be the script in that game. And as Derek Davis goes up the middle for an LSU first down, can they do it again to another tremendously physical team on both sides they're, of the ball in Georgia? They're capable because of the style of offense that play they play when when it comes to like the explosive element remember early on in the game we talked about feeling that Ohio State was a team capable of knocking off Georgia because of the talent on the perimeter in their past game TCU has that as well and so because of their explosive ability in their passing game you sit there and go they're capable of it now Georgia you know for some 
somehow, some way, Kirby Smart is going to figure out a way to use, even though you won the game, you played poorly, and really hyper-focus their football team to play it what he believes or what they believe would be their best game of the season. So you th I think I lean Georgia because of that, but TCU's capable of it for sure. Right up the middle, Davis. Six yards. Makes a third down and four. And it looks like we've got an LSU injury. So an injury timeout on the field. We'll step aside with just over 10 minutes to go. On top of Purdue. And so we'll take the liberty of checking that last box. We talked about this earlier for Brian Kelly. An Alabama win in overtime, win the division, reach the top five in the college football playoff rankings. On the doorstep, if things would have gone their way, to making the, foot, the playoff. But now a 10-win season, the first for LSU since the historic national championship year of 2019 that a big step forward Dan and Brian Kelly's first year yeah just a great start to his tenure down at LSU third down quarterback run for Walker Howard first down and more into the red zone before he's bumped out by Cam Allen you catch Purdue with a pressure call quarterback draw run into it Walker Howard showing off some athleticism Side to blitz, you got guy for a guy and offensively, and then there's a huge lane for the true freshman. Dive up the middle. Now to about the 10-yard line. Thomas heads off, and Davis comes back in. Davis to the five. Muscles his way to the end zone for a touchdown. My goodness. And LSU continues to pour it on. Derek Davis from 12 yards out. <laughs> Santa Boiler. And it's been a long afternoon for a Purdue fan, but everyone getting into the act for LSU. Uh, that's that same run play that LSU has run multiple times down in the red zone, too. Pulling people, and then you're letting physical backs finish on runs. The backup kicker, Mata, puts it through. And as we approach the midway point of the fourth quarter, a dominant performance by LSU as we take a look at our game track brought to you by TikTok. The largest halftime lead of any bowl since the 2019 Peach Bowl. It was 35-0 LSU at halftime. And three different players with passing touchdowns today for the Bayou Bengals. This is an offense that has scored 56 points today for LSU. They got a chance to get 10 starters back next year, including five of their starting offensive linemen. Campbell, we talked about both him and Emory Jones as the true freshman. Their left guard, Miles Frazier, you talked about his versatility, Bobby. Charles Turner at center, who actually got banged up in this game. And then Anthony Bradford at right guard is probably the one that they think, man, if he gets a little nasty streak to him, is going to be a really big player. Yeah, see, I knew Steve he looks Turnberger, as... our director, would find one of my guys in the stands. Yeah. Took him a while. Can he play quarterback? <laughs> no, he's playing. No, he's playing. You think he's swiping? It'll come out to the 25-yard line for Purdue. 
And one of the great games in college football earlier this year, November 5th, Alabama LSU in Death Valley. Down seven. Daniels from 25 yards out for the touchdown to pull within one. And then Brian Kelly goes for the win. And it works. Mason Taylor converts the two. And they storm the field in Baton Rouge. And why not? A 32-31 win for LSU over Alabama. That was really one of, if not the signature moment this sure. year for this LSU program. Probably the signature, not maybe not signature, but a big turning point, Bobby, was that Florida game. You know, that's the week after that Tennessee game. They go on the road to Florida, and that's when Florida was still healthy and, and playing pretty good football and win 45-35. That was certainly the game that Jaden Daniels turned the page and started to trust more and had better timing and the environment and... You know, Brian Kelly and Mike Denbrock, their play caller, said we saw it coming. Um, but that was the first time, certainly this season, that they felt it happened in a game when it comes to Jaden's performance. Mock could be about three yards shy of a first down, so it will be third down and three for Purdue. As this season progressed, Aiden Daniels moved further and further up Mel Kuyper's board of draft eligible quarterbacks, getting to the top five at one point. As a Limo, quarterback keeper, and he is very close to the first down, about a half yard shy. As we go down to Chris. Bobby, you and Dan talk about just the development of Jaden Daniels since that Tennessee game that we had. And talking to him, part of that also was learning to take on a leadership role. He transferred over, comes in, wasn't even named the starter until after fall camp. So how do you lead, take over a team when you're not named the starter until late? He said it took that amount of time. That's when he had called up a private meeting with the wide receivers to all get on the same page. It took halfway through the season for him to say, okay, this is my voice and it's okay to use it. And Dan, obviously the quarterback has to be naturally a leader just based on the position and the role you have on the team. But how hard is it to come as a brand new quarterback and immediately snap your fingers and become that leader to Chris's point? Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to step into a locker room that knows each other incredibly well. You've spent time together and then all the quarterback comes here and he's like, hey, I'm the guy. And you've got to earn that at that role. So often quarterbacks get given... Um, responsibility and they get given I guess praise without earning it and just because they're placed into that role and I think one of the reasons why Brian Kelly admitted this that he may be hindered the early season development when it comes to the on the field but also to Chris's point that leadership because of their hesitation to just name him the starter and I think that's something that as a quarterback you have to go get you have to earn from your teammates on a day-by-day -day basis shot from Alamo misses Sheffield so it will be third down and ten you know I often say this Bobby one of the hardest things for quarterbacks is to prove to your teammates that you don't think better that you are better than everybody else you know because again we glamorize the position and when you're talking about a player that's transferring over that's an even almost double down thing that you have to prove to everybody. Hey, just because I'm a quarterback and, and stepping into this locker room, I don't automatically assume I'm your leader. Well, I'm all with a quarterback run out to midfield. What wasn't like Jaden Daniels was transferring in with zero resume. He was a 6,000 yard passer and a 1,300 yard rusher in three years at Arizona State. So he played at the FBS level in a power conference and had put up some numbers but come to the SEC with a team I was just gonna say that was you know? A, you know trying to get it back with their brand new coach and obviously used to a different level of success at LSU fourth down here's a Lima again he's gonna launch one down the sideline incomplete tried to drop one into Deion Burks and it will be LSU taking over on downs as Burks is still down after that collision back at about the 14-yard line. So, got an injury timeout, a chance to check in with Kevin Nagandi. Bob, want to remind our audience, coming up, the granddaddy of them all, Cam Rising, one of five Utah players with at least 300 rushing yards. Looked very good the last time out in the Pac-12 championship. Penn State, Utah, the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential. Coming your way, 5 p.m. Eastern over on ESPN. Back to you guys. 
All right, Kevin, thanks very much. Just over six minutes to go in the fourth quarter of the Cheez It Citrus Bowl. And we're keeping our eyes on Dion Burks as he is still being looked at by the training staff as he went down hard trying to catch that fourth down deep ball from Michael Olima. And it looks like they are making sure that they keep his head stable. And this is not what you ever want to see. Well, they have his helmet off. And I'm not sure if they're calling for the cart or not. But his head really snapped back hard as he went down with Sage Ryan there in coverage. So an injury concern here at the Cheez It Citrus Bowl to wide receiver Dion Burks of Purdue as they are now going to bring out a backboard. And you can see the concern of everyone on that Purdue sideline. Dan, always scary when you see a player's head snap back or yeah. in any direction as violently as Dion Burks did. At full speed, calling the play, did not see that and wasn't sure exactly what the injury was. But then you start to see someone from the training staff with a hand on each side of a player's head, keeping the head immobilized. And then you see the replay hard his head hit the ground. That's scary. And you hope this is one of those moments, as you can see, Basically, the whole Purdue football team coming down to get down on a knee right near Burks. You hope this is one of those cases where it's a, a precautionary measure by the medical staff, as it should be, from Purdue to make sure that they're doing everything that they can for Dion Burks to be in the best care possible. I don't know if most of the Purdue football team at first realized how serious this injury might be or how careful they are being with Deion Burks until they saw how long the trainers were surrounding him. And now they're going to slide that backboard underneath Burks. And hopefully we will see that thumbs up that we sometimes yeah. get from a player as he goes off the field in this situation. Now these kids have been through a lot, you know, it, it, past couple weeks there's been a lot of change in their life a lot of uncertainty and unknown in their life as now we've got more medical help coming and um, when you see one of your teammates a guy that's become a brother over your time together down like this um, there's a lot that goes through your head So the backboard is in place, and now a stretcher is going to come out for Dion Burks. And you can see they have his head immobilized hmm. as well as the backboard being in place. Good 
give us something. This is the scariest scene as you can see in football. Yeah. No one left on Purdue's bench. They are all coaches and players surrounding Deion Burks. Uh, they finally have him loaded up on the card. And they will get him to an area hospital as quickly as possible. Yeah, thumbs up. And I think I see a thumbs up. Mm. Well, that is what you're hoping to see. Just some movement, and we just saw some from Deion Burks. And Chris Budden was down there with a better view than we had. Chris? You did just see him give the thumbs up. He will go to Orlando Regional Medical Center, which is about two and a half miles from here. All of his teammates around him saying, I love you, bro. I love you. You got this. Uh, he was awake and responding to questions from the doctors. As soon as I get any other information, I'll let you guys know. Well, that's also good to hear. So we got a thumbs up. And just knowing that he was able to have a dialogue with those that were caring for him, You'll take any good sign that you get yeah. when a player is in that situation. Probably the worst, to your point, Bobby, the worst thing you can see on a football field is when that happens. And it's jarring, and it never gets easy to see, and you just uh, hope and pray that for Dion Burks, uh, for him and his family, where he's going to be okay and just thinking about him. So tough to get back to the last six minutes of a football game after that moment, but LSU does take over on downs. And they'll run it again with Derek Davis. And he will be brought down right at the line of scrimmage by OC Brothers. Just imagining how hard this is for Purdue, you know, for their players after just seeing that, the way the game is gone. You've got five minutes left. Some guys, it's the last time they're going to play ball. And, you know, just seeing that with their teammates, it's got to be very difficult for them to just try to get back into the moment of playing, ga playing a game. A couple of yards for Davis on second down. It will be third down and eight. And a reminder coming up over on ESPN. And State in Utah at 5 Eastern set to get underway the Rose Bowl game presented by Prudential. So third down and eight. Jaden Nicholas taking the end around flip and has nowhere to go. Although keeps his footing and scoots down the sideline. 
And let's go down to Chris Budden. Chris, for some possible good news? Yes, just heard from Purdue, and he has, Burks has feeling and movement in all his extremities. So positive news coming out of that. That's great. Amen. Let's get him to the medical center as quickly as possible. And on fourth and six with four minutes to go. And the third and fourth stringers out there for LSU. The freshman Walker Howard given an opportunity with Davis to his left to go for it. And we'll try and run for it. And Davis won't get it. So Purdue gets a stop on downs with 3.43 to go in the fourth quarter. And after the next three and a half plus minutes goes by, we will have on the ESPN app immediately after the game, the Capital One post game and the presentation of the Cheez-It Bowl Citrus for the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl trophy, pardon me, to be given to LSU and Brian Kelly. So Jack Albers takes over now at quarterback. And hands one up the middle to Caleb Leahy. And he gets four yards on first down for the Boilermakers. Earlier I mentioned Brady Allen. He's in the transfer portal. Hard to keep track of all these guys that are in the portal and <laughs> opting out. It was one I missed. But Albers gets a chance to engineer maybe one final possession here. And flips it in the right flat. And Bouchel, the tight end, scoots up the sideline and has a first down down to the LSU 44-yard line to pick up a 13. Yeah, Bobby, you mentioned Brady Allen being in that transfer portal. And if I'm right, Ryan Walter is their new head coach, bringing Graham Harrell in as their play caller for his tenure. Also, Hudson Card, I, I believe, transferring over from Texas and plans to go to Purdue as well. There's a drop by Preston Terrell. Well, again, that is the way of college football now, mm -hmm. right? Coaching changes go along with player changes because with the one-time transfer opportunity without having to sit out a year, and it's unrestricted it kinda, free. Yeah, it creates a free agency world but in college football. But it's unrestricted free agency as well, you know, like the, where it's, you know, anybody can go anywhere at any time, essentially. And there's good that comes from it, there is. Well, I have to admit, I know it creates chaos in college sports. Personally, I have no problem with it. The coaches have always been able to change schools and change jobs, regardless of what they tell recruits whenever they want to move on. And for 99% of these college football players, these years of eligibility and the opportunity to play at these programs is the last time they'll ever play this sport. Right. Third down at eight. Third down at eight. Albers ball tipped at the line and falls incomplete. So if you have a chance to follow a coach somewhere, knowing that rather than maybe sitting on the bench for a coach you're unfamiliar with, sure, you know you're going to go play somewhere. I mean, players play, right? You want to go be on the field. And I, I don't have any problem with a player with only four years of eligibility or five yeah. at best to go take advantage of that and go somewhere and be on the field. Yeah, it gives the players a little bit more power, uh, certainly over their career when it comes to college football and their decision-making, um, if it doesn't work out with that initial one. Alberts up the seam on fourth down, and I think that's an incredible catch. Wow, Maxwell with a terrific catch. I think he used his feet as much as his hands to keep it off the turf. And he did. Oh, Kicked my goodness. To himself. Bounces off that left leg, and he's just got the hand eye to kind of track the ball, pin it on his chest. Great catch by Maxwell. Alex Maxwell with a 20-yarder on fourth down. Well, that gives Purdue one more chance to try and get it in the end zone. And he stopped on first down. Flag down as Lehay was brought down after no gain on first. Not to check the penalty marker unless they just picked it up. It looks like they did. Oh. 
Bowers in trouble. Runs to the sideline, a little juke, and maybe a pickup of a yard. West Weeks forced him out with 106 remaining. Albers with a strike that is incomplete. He whistled one in. And that time Maxwell couldn't hold on, so now it's fourth down. Alex Maxwell, that pass incomplete. That is my kind of tower. Jenga? <laughs> Absolutely. Anything that falls, I get. I think that should be the rule. <laughs> You'd send a bowling ball at it if that was the case. <laughs> Albers on fourth down. It is batted around and intercepted down at the goal line. Rod Wilson with a convoy. Wilson down the sideline with a cutback. Vaughn Wilson's going to go the distance. Touchdown. A flag down for, as you would imagine, excessive celebration. On the part of LSU, I don't think they're going to mind. And Quincy Wiggins, by the way, behind the play, is injured, but 99 yards for Wilson on the tip ball. Pick six, interception return. A blimp shot as he weaved his way through traffic and then got a convoy of blockers. <laughs> Just look how crazy this is. Oh, that final cut. Not good for that young man. I know it's a tough break for Albers, but good for Wilson. They are having fun over there on the LSU sideline, and why not? As they are with this extra point. About to tally up 63 in the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl against Purdue. And there it is. But with all due respect to Quad Wilson and his 99-yard interception return, how about the day for Malik Neighbors? Been incredible. I mean, he's been their go-to receiver throughout the season, and it showed up today. Throws on the sideline, they got him the ball. In his hands, in space, you saw the dynamic, athletic ability, the speed. Six foot, 195 pounds. They'd allow him to be a little bit of a passer in this game. The touchdown pass to Jaden Daniels. Impressive player. And Malik Neighbors is our Capital One player of the game. 163 yards receiving and a touchdown. And a couple of passing completions, one good for a touchdown as well. I think the Cheez-It shower, by the way, has already been given to Brian Kelly over on the sideline as there is like a Cheez-It crime scene at the 50-yard line right in front of the LSU that's the, bench. That's the, what you thought would be the best way to describe it? That's right. <laughs> Don't do it. Kelly. Do not do that, Coach. Uh, why not? Coach, do not Celebrate. do that. Yes. <laughs> that is a coach after my own heart. Five-second rule. Absolutely. That's the taste of victory right there. <laughs> Gotta get down there. Well, if this holds, a 56-point margin of victory equals the second largest in bowl history. So it's been a lopsided day for LSU.
Bryce Hampton on the return for Purdue. 33 seconds to go. Come on. Oh, yes. Yes. Dive. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully that's pre-bite. Or post-bite, excuse me. <laughs> Joe Fouché having some fun down there. And why not? It's party time for LSU. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got, Everybody's going in. We got more people taking pieces off the ground. I it's like it. It's been a long game. Get a carb up. Why wait? And a straight ahead handoff, and we'll see if that it turns out to be the final play of the game. As Kentrell Marks is brought down. Oh, looks like Purdue may hustle up. No. Well, they are going to wave the white flag and call it a day here in the Cheez It Citrus Bowl. 63 7 will be the final as Brian Kelly is able to cap a very successful first year in Baton Rouge with now officially a 10 win season and it ties the largest win in bowl history in college football. Don't forget, in a few minutes, you can watch the Capital One postgame ceremony on the ESPN app. For Dan Orlovsky.